I think it's probably the one of the it's one of the most important things that people need to get a grasp on is this idea that there's not uh, one pie and that the piece that you get is now a piece that I can't get. Mm -mm. And that's what I think it's back to why we do this podcast. I want um, you to have the whole pie. You yeah. want to know why? Because I'll make another damn pie. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I mean, because it's, it's infinite. We'll open a pie factory. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Good job. Yeah. Impressed with your vibe. Yo, what up, guys? It's Gary Vee, and it's time for the Daily Bread. Give us our daily bread. I want the whole basket. Cause I'm a hustle till I get it or I'm in a casket. Passionate for providing value in every way. Not cashing in for providing value every day. Paying it forward. Right thing, I'll do it till I'm dead. I hope you're hungry cause it's time for the Daily Bread. got done filming a Sales Wolves podcast um, here. Uh, we had a guest uh, come in, one of my business partner's mentors, um, awesome guy, Roger Ezell. Uh, so just got done filming that. Coincidentally, my daughter walked in with my wife and then kind of peeked their head in, then left. I guess they were just nearby. I don't know where they are now. Um, but now I am uh, about to eat. I've been doing this intermittent fasting, so I can't eat till 12. So it's just 11 to 12 now. Got all this prep food. Got some steak here. Got these um, keto pancakes. These pancakes have no carbs. They're made with like egg and cream cheese, cinnamon, a bunch of other stuff. They're really good. Some uh, egg things. Got some of these chicken meatballs. So about to cook up some lunch and um, watch some content. I'll eat that real quick, then I got a call at 1230. Um, the awesome guy, Bo Williams, um, has been kind of a mentor uh, of mine, Harvard undergrad, Harvard MBA, super smart guy, but just a really cool one. Um, and um, just impressive business uh, person. So I'm gonna talk to him at 1230, doing a training here at one, and then just, the rest of the day, just doing emails, kind of like yesterday. I mean, I kind of feel bad some of these episodes lately. I've just got so much work I'm bogged down with, like busy work, computer work, that like, it is what it is. Like, I gotta get it done. Um, and so we're lacking in some some of the content that we normally get, um, going in and out of meetings um, and different things, but um, I wanna make sure that I'm still able to get some stuff, but like at the end of the day, like you guys know, my main focus is to remain focused, uh, which, I mean, it's all good right now, but I could see where it could slide if I let this other stuff distract me, so I'm just really focused on not doing that. Um, I think that's something quite frankly that that's a good lesson um, that there are things that are going to come into your life and that you may get really passionate about or that that may be a point of interest for a period of time and just got to make sure that like the things that must get done get done and prioritizing and time blocking and all those things that we all know um, but it's more important on a higher level that you just know um, that you're getting stuff done. Like there's no worse feeling than going to home at the end of the day or, or going into a weekend at the end of a week and knowing that you didn't get the stuff that was needing to get done completed. Even if it meant that you did a million other things that are great, but the stuff that needs to get done has to get done. And so um, that's just kind of is what it is and it may not be the greatest content ever created um, but it will enable further content to be created so that's that and uh, with that it's time for lunch when you ride around during the day and you ride through the community look at all the riches look at all the abundance mm -hmm. out there aren't you just as deserving of that as any living creature that's right. And I, I've always remembered Earl saying that. It was just an yep. incredible thought. You know, why not, you know? Yeah. Well, when you grow up, you grew up fairly poor, right? We were so poor, we couldn't afford to pay attention. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and when you grow up that poor, a lot of times you grow up with the mentality that it's not for you. That that's for other people that were born into something different or that they're better than you. And did you ever face that, or did that you was, have to overcome that? Was that? Drum, that was drummed into you, but I'm gonna throw that back. I'm gonna throw the ball back. At what age 
did you know you were different? And at what age did you know you were going to grow up and be successful? Uh, as long as I can remember. Yeah. See, as every long as I can remember. Man. Every successful person I've ever asked that question had either that answer or they were four or five or six. It had to be that age. Yeah. I remember yeah. saying, I remember telling my mom and dad that I was going to be so rich that when rich people found out about it, I didn't know the difference between rich and wealth, but I said I was going to be so so rich or so wealthy that when rich people found out about it, they'd get sick about it. <laughs> That's what I used to say. That was my that was my thing. I, and they were like, how are you going to do it? And I was like, well, I have no idea. <laughs> and, and I remember uh, my mother and my grandmother when I was growing up, and I remember the age because I remember where I was living. I was probably around six. And I remember constantly hearing, well, you can't have everything you want. Hmm. And I used to think, why not? Yeah. I, I, as a young kid, I thought that, why not? You know? And I, I just always felt like I was a little different. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, me too, for sure. I think that's, that's probably the best way we can kind of close the podcast is talking about that idea. I think it's one of the most important concepts that you mentioned is just abundance and just that that feeling of abundance like versus scarcity mm -hmm. i think it's probably the one of the, it's one of the most important things that people need to get a grasp on is this idea that there's not uh, one pie and that the piece that you get is now a piece that i can't get mm -hmm. and that's what i think it's back to why we do this podcast I want you to have the whole pie. You yeah. want to know why? Because I'll make another damn pie. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I mean, well, because it's, it's infinite. We'll open a pie factory. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and that's the important thing about, like we talked about mentors uh, that are willing to invest their time in others. And this podcast that we're willing to spend our time sure. um, investing in, in other people so that they can be successful. And the idea that there's no secrets, there's no... You know, this is something that I got to hold close because I figured out this sales tactic. Like, there's none of that ever. Yeah, yeah. Like, within our business, but within any business, the person that thinks that way has that scarcity mindset versus I've met versus with somebody, and, and then I learned this from Roger. I remember calling him. The whole reason we have anything here is because I called him one day, and I was talking to him on the phone about our about our system and how we sold insurance, and I was like. Roger, nobody does it like this. This is what we're doing, and this is the success that me and Jeff and Nathan are having. And 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 I said, I I am trying to hire other people, but I'm scared somebody's going to take this system, mm -hmm. and they're gonna they're gonna steal it and use it across you. And he just laughed. Mm -hmm. He thought that was the funniest thing he ever heard. He said, Boy, don't you know? Thieves don't work as hard as you're working. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> he said, you ain't got to worry about that. He yeah. said, just go and do it. And that literally was the six months prior to our first training course. That's when we went from 2,500 policies in 2012 to 9,000 in 2013. Mm -hmm. And it was that reason alone where I just, I literally took that day, drank some vodka and let go. <laughs> I just let go of that, that, and that, it hasn't been a problem. It hasn't been a problem. Yeah. No. In fact, when insurance people call, I remember. I remember people calling you and you telling them how to do really good in the finance and buy here, pay here world. And I was thinking, what if they put a lot across the street? Right. I asked him that and he said, great. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I went, what? And, and may, so, I, may I mention one other quick thing I think is important because there's some doubters out there. Not, not of Joseph, but they're doubters of themselves. Right. Forget about talent. Forget about ability. The world is full of able, talented derelicts and alcoholics. Yep. You give me a person with desire, determination, and dedication, I will always give you a winner every time. Uh, but those are the people that make it. They right. just refuse to give up. They do not understand. And my mentor, James, I told you, died at 94. He said, I've been knocked down so many times you can't imagine it. He said, but I got up every time. Every time. <laughs> and those are the winners. You got to get up. They're the ones that make it. Yeah. That's get out of the hallway. Yeah, it's <laughs> hell in the hallway. <laughs> I'm glad you remembered that. I forgot yeah. about that. Yeah. What, what was the advice you gave us? <laughs> I said, hey, give everybody some advice here. You were on the phone or just, no, you, he, he stopped by. You were on the phone. Yeah, yeah. And it just popped into my head. Buy low, sell high, collect early, and pay late. Yeah. Yes, sir. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my gosh. Uh, there's some truth in that, though. Yeah. <laughs>